Hey guys, it's Rob Sebeck with Paperless Student. In today's video, I will be talking to you guys about the iPad version of Microsoft OneNote for 2019. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your studies or your business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when I release a new video. I haven't spoken about Microsoft OneNote in a long time. Microsoft updated the application a while ago. The reason OneNote is such an interesting app is that it is free, yet it offers a lot of great features that make it a functional note-taking application. The application is available on all devices, despite what operating systems the devices run. And this makes it a great choice for those of you that want an application you can use across different operating systems. One thing to note though, is that Microsoft seems to create differences in the applications depending on which device you're using. So note that this video focuses on the iPad version of the application. That means there are some functions that you will not find and there's things you can't do which you'd otherwise be able to do on your laptop. Just bear that in mind. When you open the app, it looks familiar. It has the basic Microsoft Word layout with your home insert draw and view toolbar at the top of the application. While it looks like Microsoft Word, it's not quite the same because it has some missing tools to make it a fully functional Microsoft Word app. And it also has some features that are unique, which sets it apart from Microsoft Word. Starting from the left column here, this is where you create your notebooks. Each notebook will have sections and pages. Let's create a new notebook for surgery. I can choose what color I want my notebook to be. Here it tells me where my notebook would be located. Then when I tap create, I have a new notebook created. Under more notebooks, I can add notebooks to my iPad that are in my OneDrive account. And it doesn't matter what account they are in. So I have two separate OneDrive accounts. If I want to get my notes from a different account, I just have to put in the OneDrive password for that account. For my sections, I will create one for lecture notes, one for personal study, and revision questions. I can also add as many pages as I need in each section. I can further divide and organize my pages according to different hierarchies. The application has a three-step hierarchy system. You can have subdivisions for different pages. Right now, I'm just going to quickly create some subdivisions for a topic. The topic I'll create would be complications of peptic ulcer. And then I will have some divisions under this topic. I will have causes, pathogenesis, clinical picture, treatment. And under treatment, I will have non-surgical treatment and surgical treatment. I will then have a section for prognosis and one for complications. This level of organization helps you to appreciate a topic at a glance and it also helps you to organize your work more precisely. You can easily delete pages and you can change the hierarchy. And you can also move pages to different sections. And the organization of pages in this application is great because it essentially helps you to create an outline for your notes or your documents. You can delete your sections, you can move them to different subjects as well, and you can copy a section to paste it somewhere else. You can edit this section by renaming it or by changing the color of that section. 
you can password protect the section but once you create a password there's no way to recover it so you'll need to remember the password otherwise you will lose your notes forever and if you have something you wish to get off your chest and want it lost forever this might just be one way to do it <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys did this but in in high school especially if i had something that i wanted to get off my chest i would write it on a piece of paper and i'll burn it then you're like your dark little secrets that you don't want anyone to know about this might just work considering the fact that this is a cloud-based app i wouldn't be so sure that no one is going to see it i'm just saying i don't trust the cloud with my secrets <laughs> But yeah, it's it's something that you could potentially consider. Once you've created a notebook, there is not much you can do with it in OneNote. You can either close the notebook, which doesn't actually delete the notebook. It just removes it from your OneNote application on that particular device. To delete your notebook, you have to do it in OneDrive, where you go and delete the actual notebook from OneDrive completely. You can also change the color of your notebook and that's pretty much all you can do as far as your notebooks are concerned. I would have loved the ability to delete my notebooks from within the application. For me, it just makes more sense. Now that we understand how to organize your notes or documents in OneNote, let's actually look at creating a document and working on it and all the things you can do with your document. First, we will look at the pages you get in the application. You can choose your paper style from these seven options you can choose to have rule or grid lines and you can also choose the color of your page from these colors there's quite a variety to choose from you can also decide how much of your page you see you can either view your page in 100% zoom this shows the 100% zoom size of your page and personally this is the version I prefer because it gives me a full appreciation of how big my pages are and the page width option will let you see everything that's written on the page so it will show you the whole span or width of your content on that page pages in OneNote are infinite the page will continue expanding to your right and downwards as long as you keep writing which makes this application very good if you have loads of brainstorming to do or if you like creating complicated mind maps this is that type of application where you can have massive pages personally though I find that the infinite page is not so great if you plan on exporting your notes to another application so I tend to stick with with the A4 size page. And to name your pages, you have this section here that you tap to write a page title. You can create your notes either by typing or by inking and both can be added anywhere on the page that you want to add your notes. Typing comes with all your basic tools that you get in Microsoft Word. You have fonts and you can choose from quite a lot of them. You also have some font sizes. While you are writing, a text box is created around your text and it simply disappears after you finish typing. To edit the text, simply tap on it and the text box will reappear. Tapping on these four dots here will give you options to cut, copy and delete the selected sections. And these arrows here will help you to resize your text box and your text section. You can make your text bold, italic, underlined or striked out and you can even choose the color for your fonts from all these different colors and if you're not happy with those, you can select your own colors. Your text in this application is quite customizable which I can't really say about a lot of different note-taking applications. You can highlight your text. I love the highlight in this application because all the highlighted sections just catch your eye at a glance when you're looking at a page. You can create bullet points and add numbering. 
These indentation tools help you create lists that are comprehensive, very handy especially during like meetings or lectures when there is simply not enough time to think about how to organize your notes and simply tapping these arrows will automatically create your lists for you. Not only saves you time but it keeps your notes very organized. Anyone else thinking of leaving their note taking application already? Because I certainly am. You can then select your alignment from here. You have these quick styles to add to your notes. When typing really fast, you hardly have time to create headings and all those things that really just make your notes look better and much easier to understand. In OneNote, that function is literally a tap away. Though I wish they were more customizable, I wish I could customize them myself and determine what my headings look like. Unfortunately, that is not an option that you get on iPad. But I'm grateful they have the options in the first place. So simply tap a section and choose a style. It's as easy as ABC. You can add to-do lists. which you can tick off as you accomplish them. You can star sections of your notes in case there's something important that requires your attention later. You can add a question mark to stuff you don't understand. There are so many tags for different things in this application. You are bound to find something that's really useful for you. One thing I love about OneNote is that you can add a lot of different things to your notes. Adding tables is very simple in this application. Just tap on the table icon. This application offers the easiest way to add tables to your notes that I have experienced in any note taking application. You can then select a cell, row, column or the whole table for cutting, copying or alt text. You can easily add or remove sections above or below the selected section. You can add photos or take photos to add to the application. If you add a photo, you get to crop the photo or rotate it if necessary. Then you can process it as a photo, document, or whiteboard. Weird. Tap done to add it to your notes. And voila, it is there for your use in your notes. You can insert audio, but unfortunately you can't use the application while you are recording. I find this a little bit crippling because I think sometimes it's necessary for you to have both simultaneously. I blame Notability for making me get used to that system. I think it's absolutely brilliant to have that option to be able to take notes while recording audio. You can then write some notes related to that audio and you can play it back anytime you want to. 
you can add files OneNote seems to support many different types of files I've not tried all of them to see which ones are supported maybe I can do a separate video for that if you guys are interested let me know in the comment section down below so I've not tried all of these files but I did try adding videos because I think this is a new interest of mine to see which applications support videos because I think that having videos in your notes can actually be quite amazing yeah you can actually add videos to your files as long as they are less than 100 megabytes which is something is better than nothing and I appreciate it once you've added your video you can preview it which allows you to play the video within the application without needing to leave the application and this is the only note taking application I know so far that has video support so thumbs up to Microsoft OneNote for that you can also add PDF printouts. You add your PDFs to the top of your writing canvas. A simple tap on your PDF will make it movable. And I find this quite distracting not to talk about destructive to your notes layout. So the options you get when you tap on your PDF are the same options you get for anything else that you insert into the application. You can either copy, cut, delete or rotate the PDF and you can also copy text from it which is specific for PDFs. You also have the option to remove the printout if you don't want it showing on your canvas. Next you can insert links in your notes. You can add or paste a URL and also write a display name for it. You can also add equations to your notes. OneNote is one of the few note-taking applications that I know that actually supports addition of equations. I've not done mathematics in a very long time, so I really can't think of a complicated equation to show you guys just how accurate this is. But if there are any mathematicians using this application, please let us know how good the application is with creating complex equations. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's curious to know. I just can't find a math equation and I've got no idea how I would even attempt to write it with my current keyboard if I did attempt to do it. You can insert the date to mark when your notes were created and lastly you can add sticky notes and they're quite cute too. now moving to drawing tools i have no idea why there is text mode under drawing tools the lasso tool selects everything regardless of what it is and i like this because it basically means that you can move everything at once and this is good if you want to maintain your notes layout insert space is my favorite feature because it allows you to create more space between different sections of your notes to add more information on the page this is the only application i know that actually offers this feature it's a great feature if you're going to be keeping your notes within this note-taking application it works great because of the infinite canvas the eraser has an option to erase per stroke or per pixel. I just have to say, this is not the smoothest eraser I've used. It, it doesn't feel smooth at all, but it does the job. Since the last time I reviewed this application, the inking has improved dramatically. It is much smoother to ink in the application and I am enjoying using the application for writing even though I don't like the type of pen the application uses. This application only has a ballpoint pen. I actually use this ballpoint which is a big deal for me for any application. So that would just give you a rough idea of just how good the inking has become. You can customize your pen colors and thickness. And you can also add more pens on your pen collection using this plus icon. The application has the shapes tool, a handy tool for any note taking application. Just saying, not that I have any particular app in mind.
under drawing mode you can select to draw with touch i have mine disabled because it's useless for me i like scrolling with my fingers rather than writing with them otherwise my apple pencil would be pointless in my life wouldn't it be you can also select your stylus orientation which is your handwriting position while you're writing the last thing i will talk about is the immersive reader option this is essentially a feature that allows you to focus on your notes using handwriting recognition technology the application converts your handwriting to text and it can read it out for you the idea is that you focus on the notes that you've taken without a lot of distractions you can customize the voice speed and you can also choose whether you want it to be a male or a female voice you can also choose how your text looks by selecting text and a background color and you can also select text size you can also increase the spacing between your words and your characters you can highlight nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs uh, you can also turn on syllables both features i think are targeted for those learning new languages you can focus on a few lines at a time while reading this removes all other distractions from other sentences from the page a feature i wish more applications could consider having you can also turn on the picture dictionary which is really not doing anything when i turn it on maybe i'm missing something you can choose to translate to different languages which is awesome that is essentially everything there is to the immersive reader tool OneNote doesn't have complicated settings that are worth talking about and that essentially covers everything there is to know about OneNote on the iPad Pro or on the iPad in 2019. I hope you guys found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know what you guys think about OneNote in the comment section down below. I will see you guys in the next video.